Very welcome to a uh, cold, windy, blustery and misty um, Oliver Plunkett's Park and Cross from Glen tonight for this uh, Ophi Cup clash between Armagh and Cundy and Lou, County Louth. Referee just getting ready to throw the ball in, the ball's up in the air. Um, ball's won here by Armagh. Um, they're well in midfield, it's Stephen Sheridan and Andy Morning getting stuck in there, a big long ball into the full forward line. Slippy out conditions in there and out the sweeper there. It looks like Derek McGuire who's back there working the ball out, played wide to the far side. And then inside to Declan Byrne. Declan Byrne bottomed up. Looks like he's going to overplay it. Um, visibility very, very poor here with the ball comes back. Here at Armagh's Rory Grugan. And he opts for the high ball in. And it falls to Andy Mornin. Andy Mornin with a chance of an early score. And it's popped over the bar. And a good start for Armagh, Kevin. Yeah, it's a good start. They don't mind the bottle to get that ball. It's terrible conditions we playing football in. But uh, it's notable that the, the, the three opportunities they got Armagh got their hands on the ball, that they immediately put the ball in. It's obviously going to be a feature of this half. Yeah, and they've gone with... Uh, I know they played QUB in a challenge match last week, and they went with... Uh, three-man full forward line of Ethan Rafferty and Stephen Campbell and Andy Mornan and it's something similar the night. Stephen Sheridan just getting beaten to the ball there and Louth. Pulled possession, step inside, Eugene McBride just managed to get a hand on the ball there, Rory Grigger pulling up and back and it's Declan Byrne on the ball, he leads inside to James Stewart. James Stewart held up momentarily by Charlie Vernon but it's Louth in a dangerous uh, position here, they're inside the 14, well held up and they're having to recycle it back out and it's all the way back to Declan Byrne, he's 45 yards out, he plays it across the field but it's well intercepted there by Michal McKenna where in number 11 feeds it to Aaron Finden and Aaron Finden's brought down with a high challenge. Ball's launched in by Aidan Farker, high ball in again and very much a feature of this uh, first five minutes from Armagh is the long direct ball into the full forward line which um, Kieran McGinney would be hoping to pay uh, dividends this season. Um, Armagh working hard here to, to get back and, and, and win possession back. Stephen Campbell um, trying to tackle back there and a long ball comes in. Charlie Vernon, um, yeah he's confident that's going to run out and it runs out for a sideline ball um, away from Connor Grimes. Sideline ball taken quickly and it's Rory Grugan back from his um, sabbatical in England where he was doing a, a PGCE. Yeah, glad to get him back in the Armagh jersey this year. And Stephen Sheridan, he was unsure what way to go there, and he, he came back in himself, and a big long ball in to the full forward line, which is won by Mornin again. Mornin out, and he cuts inside. <laughs> it's very hard to see in this misty condition, but the filter back out, get a 1-2. Back out to Rory Grugan, he steps inside, and he dinks it in on his left foot. And that ball's cut out by Loud. So we've got Tondras there by Armagh once they got over the halfway line. Um, and it's given Loud a chance to rebound. It's all very clustered around the midfield here in these poor conditions. Long ball played in. And Ar Armagh just caught there with their backs to the ball. And the ball kicked high and hard and over the bar um, for our first point of the night by Colin Judge um, from Newtown Blues. So Kevin, it's all helter skelter at the minute and fairly frantic stuff. Yeah, the game hasn't settled down yet at all. Um, so it's just, you know, it's just all a matter with it. the conditions that we have at the minute. Is it's just about getting your hands on the ball and trying to get rid of the cobwebs that they would have at the minute. Yeah, that kick by Matthew McNeese just run out over the sideline away from Stephen Sheridan and um, Arma. Um, they'll be trying to trying to get their get their game going very quickly here ahead of the Mechanic yeah, Cup, which of course will lead into the National League and a big step up in the Division Two this year for Armagh. So here here come Loud again. They're in with a chance here. Charlie Brown steps across, but they're in here for a chance for a goal, and it's a goal dispatched for the net by a full forward Connor Grimes and poor poor slack defending there by Armagh. A um, couple of loose balls and miss miss hits and um, miss challenges, miss time challenges. Um, not a real uh, awakener for for our Mark Kevin. No, it's not. It was very very poor defence, and there was a couple of opportunities to get their hands on the ball there, and uh, it was just they were cut open. And, um, it's all about timing, getting the timing right at this time of year, I suppose as well. Or at the time there as well. So uh, uh, Aaron Finden managed to get his hands on a break ball there, and then he's a judge to have carried it too far. Um, Armagh's midfield just um, they're a bit unsure of the kickouts as of yet and that's a ball well intercepted but a very loose pass Aidan Farker runs strongly onto the ball and he's held up by two or three men this free is going to be taken by Rory Grugan who's renowned as having a sweet left foot he plays that ball sweetly in in front of Ethan Rafferty who 
who also has a sweet left foot. He tries to curl that round, but he left it a bit too far out, and it just didn't come uh, back in. Back. But um, very, very poor visibility tonight, Kevin. And, but uh, not a bad crowd here. Yeah, it's obviously the, the, everyone's excited. It's, it's, it's almost like the start of the season again here. So um, it kind of comes when we around the corner, and uh, there's been talk around the county of these new young lads coming into the squad, and people want to get out and get seeing how they're getting on. Exactly right, and oh, Rory well up, and he wins the brick ball. And Rory Brigg has seen plenty of the ball in this opening five minutes, or opening ten minutes. He's wa wagging his players across. Stephen Sheridan, one of the players who'd be hoping for a big season. Um, he's, he's a real um, player for, for Fork Hill. There's a nice ball in. It's intercepted by the full back, and it's a chance of a goal. Oh, and just wide um, at the far post there. Um, number 15, I can't see from here who... The arm on number 15 is he's going to come running out here past me now and see, soon, see, soon see. It's Stephen Campbell. Um, what actually been Eugene McVeary who took it in? Was it? Yeah, I think it was Eugene McVeary who found himself up front. He had an opportunity there. He's um, he got forward well in the half backs and he just pulled it the, the right way. Yep. So, um, goal, goal, goalkeeper, goalkeeper um, Neil Gallagher. He's taking his time here to kick this ball out. We've just been informed that um, Stephen Campbell and Ethan Rafi are wearing opposite jerseys. So um, excuse any mix-up that, that there may have been in these early stages. A good turn there by number 17, David Finn for Louth. And it's the big man, Connor Grimes, who's causing all sorts of good run there for our man, the full back line. Uh, played back out again, recycle. And our man maybe playing a wee bit too deep and inviting Louth onto them at this early stage. Ball's played across and the marking's all very loose. Played into the far corner. Oh, and that was well defended there. We'll give credit to Mickey Murray for, for knocking his man off the ball there. And the ball stayed in. And Armagh's going to build it out of defence. Very hard to see what's going on over on the far side. It's going to come back across to Charlie Vernon. Charlie plays it all the way across here to Aidan Farker. It'd be nice if it, all if it all happened over here in front of us this half. Rory gives it back to Aidan Farker and Aidan Farker delivers it long in. It looks like... Oh, it's Andy Bourne on his right. He tries to come inside, he's being held up there. Legally, says the ref, he's shown good strength. And he's, he's managed, to, he's managed to, to take it on soccer style and he's managed to work a 45 for himself. Good strength there, Kevin, by Andy Morning. Yeah, he showed really, really well. The, 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 the loud man was all over the top of him, and I thought maybe he was a free in at one stage, but he done well just to carry on, where Maddie's and Mama just sort of threw the head up, so they done well. It's just going back to the, the time where our man filtered numbers back when they were defending, it was notable to see that they kept four men up front the whole time, and they did filter back quite deep. Yeah, very good. Well noticed there. And of course, uh, in Arma TV, we wouldn't have our favourites, but we would like to see Andy Pornan having a good year, Kevin. Wouldn't we? He, he promised so much last year, and I uh, really think that this could be a big stepping stone for him this year. Um, this is Ethan Rafferty, who's stepping up to hit this 45 with the scores at a goal and a point to Louth and a point to Arma. He's going to strike this left footer, and he, he is known to be able to kick a 45. Indeed, I've seen him kicking them from beyond the 45 wearing a green shirt. He should hang this up to the back post. Oh, he hung it away from the back post. I think he was looking at the catch net. And now they're able to come out with this ball. They're playing one twos. They're being well, they're being well um, matched by Armagh. They're being well faced up by Armagh as soon as they could try and come down the middle. And Kieran McGinney's bound to be impressed with Armagh's positioning. But maybe the discipline's letting him down a wee bit. The referee's certainly taking no nonsense here tonight. And he's given them. Um, Given freeze at, at, at any possibility, can now possible outcome. Yeah, well, the arm my forwards it's certainly showing real hunger there, uh, trying to defend the ball when it's coming out and putting pressure on the on the late defence. And thought it had a case and thought it was a slightly harsh and it was a foul, but um, it's good to see that sort of hunger so early in the season. You're dead right, and that's what my point was. I'm sure the arm management will be delighted with the appetite being shown by the players at this early stage to to get involved and and to get. A connection on there, you see contact again every time a loud man's on the ball. That there's a hand in, but if Armagh can, the full back line can now get in front. That's Kieran O'Hanlon, uh, we're in number six, who's, who's seen a lot of the ball. It took a long time for me to realize, Kevin, who it was. We're in number six, it was a stranger in the jersey. Um, I don't think we've seen him there. A long ball in, played first time, but it's to nobody in particular, and that was uh, very, very wasteful. Just kicked over the shoulder there, 
on that occasion by Aidan Fogger. He must have been anticipating a runner, unless we can't see somebody in the fog over the far side. But here's a long ball in. It's played over the top of everybody, and that looks like it's going to run out over the sideline. The sideline ball. It's going to be a sideline ball for Armagh down in the low corner of this field. It's played all the way back to goalkeeper uh, McNeese. And we'll played across the field here to Aidan Farker. Aidan Farker plays it down to McKenna. McKenna's pushing the back as he, as he tries to gain possession there. And he lays, lays it back to Farker. Farker takes the free and plays it slightly diagonal. It's a ball that's not favouring the arm off forwards. They are playing the big man in, but the ball in is gonna it's gotta be a, a wee bit more accurate and direct. Um, Louth playing it across. Arma happy to let them have it inside the 21. And now they try and engage. And, um, one two there and they're running in the centre of the field. I thought Arma had dispossessed them. A high a hard tackle there in the middle gives a free to Louth. Um, Number eight here, Tommy Dornan for Louth, plays it to his midfield partner, Dan O'Connell. The long ball played in, it's over the head, oh, well done, fingertips. Fingertips there by Shea Heffron, exactly, that's who it was. Um, and what a joy it is to see Shea Heffron uh, talking about for the seniors. He's been very, very impressive with Clan Iron in the last couple of years. Long ball in by O'Hanlon. And we'll have it. Ethan Rafferty, he had the soccer out across a couple of times. And it's Eugene McVeigh. Eugene McVeigh's got a real burst of speed, we know that. And now he plays it into McKenna. McKenna's got a ball of space here. He jinks inside his man and he throws it over the bar. And a great point there and good work um, by McVeigh and a good, a good composed finish by Michal McKenna. Yeah, it's a great finish. Um, that was all down to Eugene McVeigh there. And that occasion, he, you know, he made a space for himself. He'd spotted the ball and just split the defence with just one pass. And he's, uh, he's been up and down the field uh, so far. Uh, far he's been very, 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 very good. Yeah. And by my reckoning, the score is 1-1 one, one to two points. Yeah. Goal and a point to Louth and two points to Armagh. Oh, McVeigh with a good tackle. Oh, very, very unlucky there. I think if... They're on a good dry day, the referee would have seen that, that was a perfectly fair challenge. He hit him hard and, and, and he lost his feet. Stephen Sheridan working hard to keep up with his man here. He got one hand in and managed to get him stopped and turned. But the danger man's on the ball again, Connor Grimes. He's looking on it at every occasion. He's direct here, he's going straight at it. And he, he kicks it long and hard and high. And it's another great point for the full forward, um, Connor Grimes. He's having a bit of a feed day in there. Yeah, he's, de he's not being tracked properly. He's coming out deep um, into the middle and picking up a lot of ball. And, and uh, it's, uh, they need to get a, a better grip on the player. You know, he's he leaving that much space. And, you know, in front of goals and, and playing with the winds, like he's, yeah, those points are easy. You know? That's it. So a goal and two for Louth and two points for Armagh. Um, the goalkeeper kicks yeah. this out, McNeese, and he throws it straight down the middle. Um, Finland rises and he's, uh, the ball's breaking down to Stephen Sheridan. Sheridan plays it to McKenna. And McKenna tries to dink it down the line. And it was well done there. And well won as McVary. McVary's going to try and drive this across. The keeper gathers that easily and plays it out to the right hand side. And Louth break away and they're out over the 45. Playing in field to midfielder Dan O'Connell. On his back and it's Ponderson O'Connell on it again. And nice intricate hand passing movement. And sees Declan Bourne. Pulled unceremoniously to the ground there. And Louth played laterally and down the line. And they're looking for Connor Grimes again. And indeed it is Grimes on the ball. And he powers past one or two, but a good hand in there, a good tackle. And it's out for a 45. So Kevin Armagh, Armagh look in good shape and they look um, fit and strong out there, trailing after 15 minutes by a goal. Yeah, it's only had that goal, you know, silly goal that was given away that, that sort of uh, was splitting the teams. But they're showing great appetite. They're, they're getting up and down the field. You know, they're, they're obviously trying something new this year with the forward line the way it is and trying diagonal balls. And you know, that's that's what we want to see. We want to see more attacking brand of football. You're dead right, Kevin. And on different occasions last year, we called for Armagh to, to 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 get up the field and to score and to push and be more positive. And they're certainly lined out um, very positively. Um, here, oh, it's a free the other way, referee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Free Lama. Good pressure there by the defenders. Rory's looking a quick free, and there's nobody to hit. He's he, the full forward's being held in there, I suppose. Um, but my point being, Kevin, uh, 
they're going to need to make that count. If they're going to play a three inside, they need to get the ball into them, a, a good quality ball into them, and, and, and make the scores and just keep the scoreboard ticking over. Um, two points in 15 minutes here. And they're going to need a, to get to rack on a few before half time, uh, I would imagine. Free's going to be taken here by Supi Campbell. Looks to be just inside the 45. He's going to hit it right footed. He's got a good angle. He's right in front of the post, I'd say. No real wind, any wind there is is at his back. He strikes it hard, well off target. Kept in, fisted across the face of the goal, but nobody alive to the ball for Armagh and it's Louth who were um, quickest to the ball. Rory had to pull his man back there, that was Tommy Dornan. And Dornan plays it laterally across the field. Dara McMahon with a long ball down the line. Derek McGuire and McGuire plays the inside. And it's the big man Connor Grimes on the ball again. He takes a shot, but the shot come diagonal pass, which has run all the way out for a sideline ball. So McNeese again. So Kevin, we'll just take a look at McNeese's uh, kickouts here. If he kicks it out, I had a had a I was a bit cautious. I was thinking that maybe the midfielders weren't in tune with him. He was kicking him out the middle and they were going over Aaron Finden's head. So we'll, Take a look at this and just maybe uh, see the movement of midfielders. He's looking for, he's looking and he plays it short. I'd say, I'd say his confidence took a knock with his first few kickouts. He was kicking them hard enough and he was kicking them long enough, but fortunately Armagh weren't getting the kickouts. Referee's given a line ball to Louth here. He's going to have a word with one of the Louth players, I'm not sure what for. to be a sideline ball for Louth, which I'd imagine is going to be drilled in. The ball was cut out temporarily by the Armand. I don't know if we've got anybody doing a stats on the amount of free kicks that Armand have, have given away, but it's certainly over a dozen at this stage. Um, they're certainly hungry in the tackle and in the challenge, but they're, they're falling foul of the referee. Oh, no, Uh, retrieve the ball there by Arma over along the far side. Possibly uh, Aaron Faden Forker. But a uh, loose play there by Stephen Campbell and Arma won't, 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 won't want too much of that. Ball's played. Quick one two from the free. And Forker powers past his man. He's being held. He's just over the halfway line and he's looking in. Um, Ethan Ravley standing with his hand in the air, round about the 21. It's going to come to him if he can, if he can make it. He makes it. Loud management call for a double team on, on Ethan Rafferty. Pressure. Ethan Rafferty swings it and is that a score? Oh, that's a super score. That's that's if he can, if he got if he scored that if he scored that in Crook Park, um, there'll be replays of that all week, Kevin. I will be get a few replays on the YouTube anyway. <laughs> very good, very good. So a bit a bit more encouraging there. When the quick ball went into the full forward line, uh, Ethan Ravity, we know what Ethan Ravity can do when he gets turned on that left uh, foot. And um, a timely point for our man, one that's much needed. Um, ball kicked out straight down the middle. Aaron Finland's going to jump for that, and he breaks it down lovely um, to Stephen Sheridan. Stephen Sheridan takes a hit. And it's just, um, it'd be nice to see Stephen Sheridan getting himself moving a wee bit. He's a very influential player for four kill at midfield. We know he can do it. He's just um, probably needs a wee bit of game time with the county to get his confidence going. He's a very athletic player and very, very good on the ball. Um, thought there was going to be a disagreement over who's going to take this uh, free. It's Eugene standing with the ball in his hands. I suppose he's saying, we've taken two from this range so far, Kevin, and neither of you have been successful. So let's see what Eugene can do here. He takes this from the hands. Kicks it high and kicks it straight over the bar. Good man, Eugene. 
Yeah, I've seen him do that in the Intermediate League. Um, sort of week in, week out, he was playing there. He's, uh, he's a very good free taker. And you're right, like, you know, the first two frees over that side were, were badly best at the least. Took the opportunity to lift the ball and scored us his final point. So, you know, well done, you did. That's, that's just what our man needed. Two points, two in a row there, takes the score. Um, one goal and two points to Louth and four points to Armagh. So a point in it again here. And um, Armagh um, just beginning to find a wee bit of, a wee bit of momentum there. So um, Mickey Murray just pulls his man up. It <laughs> looked like a high challenge. We'll not, we'll not comment too much there because we couldn't see what happened. Just seen somebody's legs going up in the air. Um, <laughs> they're, they're queuing up. You can see here, Kevin, when they get a free, they're happy to go lateral where, where Armas soaking back um, to try and absorb the pressure. Here comes Declan Byrne. He still holds it and he's, he's, he's going more. He plays it back as the midfielder Tommy Dernan. And Rory, Rory, Rory Griggan done enough to hold him up, but McKenna judged the foul him and Rory kicks the ball away petulantly, Kevin, which is going to cost us 10 yards here. And the Paul's in an infinitely more kickable position. Yeah, he's just made a you know a hard hard score and an easy one to say I'm silly frustration like and now we're going to absolutely nowhere there and I think that's why he is so frustrated because he's he's been you know been brought in to defy that foul for him like and it's just uh, it's now he's going to make a few scores in the game. Yeah, exactly. And Connor Grimes with another opportunity to score here. I'd say it's his third point. I know I'm not sure if it was he who scored the goal. Um, he's going to swing his foot at this. And he's pulled this one. No, put it over the bar. So it's um, four points to the goal and three. Four, four scores a piece, all right. But uh, the goal um, for Louth being the difference in the two in the two teams so far. Matt McNeese takes a look out here again and he's looking for movement from his midfielders and as he got it this time it kicks it out into the fog and it's Louth with a clean catch again. Um, Louth really dominating the, the, the kickouts and especially Armagh's kickouts in this half. A good strong run through the middle. Aidan Fokker done his best to dispossess him but he caught him round the neck and tackling just hasn't been of the tidiest um, in, this, in this opening half Kevin. No, you, know, they, you would expect the tackling to be sort of um, only in second year at this point. Like, but they, you're right. They, they, they kick outs at the minutes um, into in the middle of the field and losing their own kick outs and so many of them. They're just big in trouble. And now there's obviously been a bit of maybe back sick or something there for this three that ball to be moved up. Kevin, unforgivable. Um, that's, that's, another, that's another point uh, for Connor Grimes, just handed by by ill discipline there in, in the arm in the arm back line. That's the last two frees have been moved up and you might expect that in, in hey, Ollie, Ollie, junior Ollie, football Ollie. in the county but not, not, in the, not in the county team as the Louth manager goes absolutely mental in front of us here. <laughs> Sorry for anyone who can catch any expletives here but um, ball's played down the wing and Armagh in possession here in the cut inside and feed it into Stephen Sheridan and fog comes down even deeper here. Kieran O'Hanlon plays it out wide to Shea Heffron. Shea Heffron Bit of holding there on Rory Grigan and Armagh will take that. Kevin, <laughs> we didn't see it ourselves. It was, I, I couldn't wait to see where Shea's pass was going to go um, to see was his delivery going to be any better than than those before him. Here comes McNeese. Oh no, he's coming out there. Look, at, they're, they're talking about the kickouts. I guarantee you because um, it, it just wasn't working from the goalkeeper to the midfield to the midfield, and he's come out and uh, had a chat with his midfielders, pretty much to say, look. I'll give you the signal, you run to where I'm telling you to go there and, and let's hope and see does it make any sort of a difference. This free is going to be taken left footed by Ethan Rafferty. He's missed his, missed his first, he scored a nice one from there, all right. He's trying to aim for the back post here. Oh, nice. <laughs> Full back, let that slip, but the goalkeeper had it covered. And let Armagh doing their best to box now then here, but now they're able to work it out. Although, no, Armagh have it back. Rory being rugbyed out, out of play. Um, very harsh there and poor, poor Eugene. He, there was nothing he could do. As soon as he got it, he was being pushed back. Get off the fucking field! And the live man encroached onto the field when taking that uh, sideline ball. So it's going to be a hot ball here. Andy Mornin's in, or no, Aaron Finden's in for Armagh and it's thrown over his head on the ground by a Louth man. 
Well, Norma have it. Rory Griggan well in. Like a, like a wee ferret. I was going to say he was like a tiger, but didn't thought he was that big. Um, well done by Supi. Oh, an inspirational point. Inspirational point there by Stephen Campbell. But good work by Rory Griggan to, to, to win the break ball. And uh, he showed the composure to pick out a pass. And Stephen Campbell gladly put it. So two points in it again by Mayer Ragan. And one, one four to five points. Just as I thought. Um, and, <laughs> goalkeeper Neil Gallagher. From the Cooley Kickhams. Kicks this ball straight out the middle. And oh, Armagh win this ball. Well done there by, by, by Eugene. And Michal McKenna tries one from distance with his left foot. And what, a, what an effort by Michal McKenna. And it's straight over the bar to take it back to the point. So another two in a row there for Armagh. And um, Kevin, it'd be nice to see them draw a level before the half. Yeah, they've done well. They're like two quick fire points and two boys that we're expecting a big year from this year. You know, Roy Gregor and Emil from Canada. And, you know, we see them as two player makers in around that half forward lane and uh, they just need to get on the ball a wee bit more, but they've showed up well to get their three scores. Rory Gregan certainly built himself up from the last time we've seen him, Kevin, when Armagh went in that great run to the All Ireland quarter final a couple of years ago. He's a skinny wee lad that used to come on and kick a nice, couple of nice left footed frees, but he's really bulked himself up here and he, he looks he doesn't look out of place in this team. Yeah, but let, let forget the day he came on against Connor and scored that equalizer and um, on the field as well. So like we know he has class and um, we look forward to seeing him again this year. Yeah, Aidan Farker with good running there. Finds Eugene who's good on the ball. Oh Eugene, I just cursed him. Cur I was just about to say how good on the ball he was. Ball played in between Mickey Murray and his man Mickey just finds himself looking on the wrong side of Colin Judge. Holds him up well. Ball player back to Ball player back to number 12, Declan Bourne. Is that over the bar? That's another point for Louth. And uh, Armagh just a wee bit standoffish there. Mickey Murray found himself a wee bit um, adrift from his man. And, and when the ball came inside, I think it was Kieran O'Hanlon who was just just wasn't touched tight on Declan Bourne and gave him the opportunity to throw that ball over the bar. So listen, let's take a look and see as uh, McNeese's words of wisdom had any joy with the uh, midfielders. There's a bit more movement out around the middle. And Rory's up. We heard the call. We heard the call. Rory's up. And he won it. And a ball played down the line to Aidan Fokker. And Aidan Fokker's caught with a slight tackle. And referee's giving a side line ball. Linesman Stephen McKinley, a good arm on man. He is. He was incensed with that challenge. <laughs> um, the referee has given a, a given a free in. So Ethan Rafferty again will favour this one. He, his free so far, Kevin, he's hit one way left um, where it hasn't come back around for him. And the last one, he hit it far too lightly. He, he tried to side foot it over the bar and he didn't give it enough. So this time, maybe third time lucky for Rory from, from freeze or from for Ethan from freeze. Um, plenty of wind in his favour. He hangs this one up. It's going to go wide at the near post. Yes, the, the wind is there when the ball just caught him, just took the feet over the other side. Like that's, it's showing how difficult the conditions are. That's it, Kevin. You're being very, very diplomatic there in saying that. I would have thought he should have maybe hit it a wee bit lower and a wee bit harder um, to even try and keep it in play. Uh, but listen, he's the left footed free taker, not me. That's why I'm standing here doing the commentary. Kicked out straight down the middle. It's a clean catch for oh, clean catch for loud. Stephen Sheridan done well to get a hand in there, but the referee had judged it to be a foul. Let's take a look at the full back line and see how tight they're marking. Um, it's Declan Bourne who steps inside and finds a midfielder and stripped from him by Eugene there. And they've done well to get the ball off him. And Louth have been able to pick the ball up again and they spread the play out to the far wing. Being held up slightly by Arma. A couple of big hits over there. It looks like Aaron, Aaron, Aaron Finden. That's the sideline ball for Loud. Just on the halfway line. It's very ponderous and no rush. Kick left footed in. Mickey Murray, a judge, to be pushing his man. And diagonal ball played across. 
Ooh, and danger there, Kev. That could have went anywhere. Yeah, it was two, it was two men in there on one, so you know a better ball in, and we're in big danger. And it's, it's a couple of occasions there where the ball's been turned over and quick ball in, the, you know, towards the very forward line has put us in real danger. The goal has come from that situation as well. So you know it's okay. You know we all do want an attack and game, but uh, we do need to make sure we, we keep our back straight as well. You're dead right. Another opportunity for McNeese and the midfielders to work their magic here. It's kicked out. It's over to this side of the field, and it's the Louth midfielders who win it again. And as a result, well done, Charlie, who intercepted that. Charlie, who's been a rock for our man full back in the last couple of years, and he's really made that position comfortable for himself. Eugene McVeigh, very good on the ball this time. Played in midfield of Stephen Sheridan. Sheridan runs a bit and plays it inside to Heffern. Heffern plays a great ball. Oh, Forker. He got a clink on the hip there, which might have hurt a wee bit, Kevin, but he's a hardy enough fella. I'm sure he'll be all right there. Yeah, it was, uh, he was well off. We met him down at the, the launch of the McKenna Cup uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago, and uh, we were talking to Edslam, and he looks as, 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 as fit as it can be. Yeah, and of course he's got an extra year this year with Samiris. He's, um, he's in the office. He's working as a student union president or vice president uh, this year, so good luck to him in that role. And, um, maybe the tag out for the ranch this year in the Sigerson, but a big year for Armagh too. Here's Ethan, it's fourth free. And it's really not working for Ethan. He aimed for, aim for the near post that time. And maybe uh, maybe, maybe uh, we'll see Rory maybe dispatched on the left footed free duty soon. Goalkeeper Neil Gallagher from the Cooley Kickhams. He's in no rush here playing against this wind. Um, they're more than happy with their performance so far, especially around the midfield where they've, they've been uh, very, very dominant. Her kick out that time though. Uh, I think it's Oshin McKeever who was unfortunate there not to hold on to possession. Long ball played in. Kieran O'Hanlon out muscled his man there and done very well. Mickey Murray steps inside and uh, we'll, keep, we'll keep possession here. Charlie Vernon steps inside his man again and does well. So far so good from our man in this, in this move. Goes back to Charlie and the look inside. Rory Griggins drifted in behind his man and he's looking it down the line and it's a poor ball. Very, very easily intercepted. And Ethan has shouldered his man in the back. Um, and there's a good interception by Shea Heffern who read that really, really well. Um, the ball played out here and now they're on the attack again. Gonna have to be a hit. And Eugene McVeigh done really well, got his hands up nice and high, um, tackled the ball and was able to pull the ball away from him. Stephen Sheridan uh, held up slightly there and Ethan recycles the ball across. Bit of holding there, seen by the referee. Um, Louth have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven men inside the 45. Larmas three. Rory's about to enter. It's four. Um, Larma playing about outside the 45. Uh, we're going to kick it in. Sheridan gives a one-two with Supi. Supi steps inside and he's pulled back. Um, frustrating stuff there. I think uh, Arma were maybe going to have an opportunity to play that, play a ball in the full 14 there, Kevin. And, Pull him back like a under 10 game. Yeah, it was, but it's happened on, on three or four occasions there in the last few minutes. Maybe maybe the loud man was starting to get a bit tired. Yeah, maybe so. It's as as we predicted on Arma TV. Rory's been moved on to left footed free duties, and the first one he kicks goes straight over the bar. Maybe we've got a secret line to the management, Kevin. <laughs> um, good good free kick there by Rory, and that narrows the gap again. With the score at present. Yeah, goal and five points for Louth and seven points to Armagh. So Armagh have never been able to bring this back level yet. Still a couple of moments to go in this half. One point in it. One five to seven and the ball is kicked out. Let's see, can Armagh do any better from the other kick out? And Stephen Sheridan gets his hands and it breaks into Finden. Finden hunts it right in front of him and finds Michal McKenna. McKenna turns and instinctively kicks the ball over the bar. And that's level score. 1-5 uh, to 8 here in St Oliver Plunkett's Park and bar the free kicks Kevin I can't remember too many wides in this game 
No, it is. It has been the free kicks where you would think you know you've better opportunity to put them over, but the, the, the half forward line has showed up by well, kicking some good scores. Uh, it was just a pity they've missed some chances out of the goal and probably fairly comfortable at half time. Um, and another kick out one cleanly by Louth, who are really judging the, the ball well in these conditions. Ball played across the far side, it's a foot race. Ashley McKeever just beaten to the ball and then his his man Keith McLaughlin ends up in a load of space here and he chips the ball over the bar expertly and a lovely point there one six to eight to the Louth man and um, it really was um, good play there by Louth in the far side just got to the ball ahead of Mickey Murray and Ashley McKeever and they made the over the overlap count and a good confident score so McNeese uh, looks out and assesses his options and plenty of movement this time along the far side. Uh, Finden comes this side. It's going to go over him. No, brilliantly caught by Finden. Finden gives it to Sheridan, and Sheridan tries to power his way. And if he had to let Armagh go on, Rory Grigham was in acres of space there. <laughs> and Armagh play it sideways. And it's Kieran O'Hanlon who makes a good bit of ground. Ball's kicked high. Andy Morning's going to attack this, but it's, it's just gone out. And haven't seen a lot of Andy Morning in this half, Kevin. People are shooting from distance, I suppose, with the wind and uh, very few opportunities for him. He got the first point of the game, but um, would like to see a bit more of him in the second half. Yeah, it was you know the beginning of the first half where it was a lot of high balls going in in the beginning to put the Louth defence under pressure, and he was on the ball quite a bit. But since as uh, soon as the, the first half sort of went on, he's he's been out of the game. But uh, maybe see a lot more of him in the second half. Yeah, and Rory Grigan, he tries he tries that diagonal ball in, but it's cut out. Um, Louth, the spare man in in the full back line, and they're not taking any chances um, against this wind. It was the right idea, I suppose, by Rory, but just per um, application. Ball played long here, and that was a ball really to nothing because Kieran O'Hanlon's standing there on his own. And he comes again up to the halfway line, plays it very, very loosely, very loosely. Um, maybe he couldn't see it, we couldn't see it in the fog. The referee blows up for half time with a score of 1 6 to 8 points um, to County Louth. So we'll take a break now and join us again in the second half. And you're welcome back here to the second half of this uh, Ophi Cup clash between um, Cundi Ardwaha, I guess Cundi and Lou. Uh, Louth leading by a point. We start the second half here. And the referee ready to throw the ball in. Ball's thrown up. Stephen Sheridan jumps. Can't. Sort of caught it and dropped it, and Aaron Finden sort of had it and dropped it. And Stephen Sheridan has it this time, and he's sort of tripped on a big long ball played in. High ball hanging. Andy Morning goes for it, gets a handle it, it's in the air. And Louth have it. Louth man tries to drop kick it out. It's out to the centre half back here. He's getting bottled up, and he's, he's um, let it out for a 45 there. And all very hectic and frantic at the start of the second half, Kevin. Um, it's like goal chance there at one occasion. Yeah, and again, it's the same same thing as the first half. The first opportunity was to, to pump it in quick and early into, into the box. Yeah. Yeah. That's quick, quick 45. And uh, this is opportunity. Playing a bit of wind and get the ball in quick. And Ethan Rafferty makes a wee bit of ground, plays it back to Aidan Farker. He's left footed, feeds it back to. And it's Stephen Sheridan in a bit of space here. And he tried to feed the runner running through, and it's intercepted for the for, for maybe the third or fourth time in this game. Well out by Shea Heffern, who comes out and wins that ball. Um, but uh, they're unable to get the second ball on this occasion. It was good play there by Jared McSorley from the Dundalk Gales. And it's McSorley again from the Gales. And he's running in on goal. Takes a shot at goal, and it's a goal. And Kevin, he made unbelievable ground through the middle of that. It just opened up in front of him there. Um, Moses in the part of the Red Sea. And a goal there um, just at the most unopportune time or inopportune time for Armand. Yeah, it's such a soft goal, but you know, he was able just to play one, two, he's a split the whole defence open and, and run straight through on goal and, uh, for an easy top end. Like that's it shouldn't be happening in Cooper football that much here and stop where early and ball kicked out here by McNeese. And a great strong kick out. Which Armagh 
uh, win on this occasion. Rory Gregan once again getting on the break. He kicks the ball in to Michal McKenna. Michal McKenna fires it over the bar. The referee had uh, blown for a free, but I think he's going to let the point stand. An, ex an excellent uh, kick it was too. And Michal McKenna he just run on, let it speed, and hit it off the laces. Um, and uh, we, we like to see a bit more of that from Michal McKenna, Kevin. Yeah, that's the third occasion now. That's his, thir his third point in this three, three occasions where he's got on the ball, uh, torn very quickly, and just put the ball straight over the back spot. So, you know, three great points from him. Yeah, uh, two six to nine points here. The score is just a goal in it again. Uh, Arma still with it all to do. Um, Lyth fumbling the ball there, and, and they're able to pick it up again. Arma take it off them again, and it's Rory is very clean in possession there, and plays it back to Eugene. Eugene makes a good bit of ground down that right wing, and feeds it in. And a hell of a score from Joe Feeney. His first touch. The prodigal son has returned and Joe Feeney, after a time out of county football, has returned and with his first touch he's kicked over a wonder point. Takes it back to two points. Uh, two six to Louth and ten points to Armagh here. And that'll maybe give Armagh a wee bit of confidence uh, going forward. The wind in this half is sort of blowing into the faces here. It's blowing across the field, um, away uh, down towards Crossing Glen Village. And a uh, goalkeeper looks up and he kicks his left footed kicks it to the far side where it's contested keenly. And Armagh have won it and Ethan Rafferty's in possession. Feeds it down to Rory. Rory's really making things happen for Armagh here today. He plays it down into the forward line to Gavin McCarland, his club mate, who found a wee bit of space. Done really well to hold it. Show good strength, Gavin, and good balance to stay on his feet and on a, on a, a relatively easy free for Armagh here. Yeah, he, you know, Rory got on the ball there. He could have taken a very simple option of just listening it to the side again. But he's looked up and he's split the defence and uh, played the ball in, in, in straight into Gavin's chest. He's won the ball and won the free, so um, this should be another point now for Armagh. It's Eugene McVary who's going to take this free. He bounces it and studies the posts. He runs up. Kicks this expertly um, between the posts. And another point to take it to the two-point game. Uh, two six to ten points. Two six, two six to eleven. A one point game, very good. Uh, or am I doing better than I was giving them credit for? <laughs> but Kevin, we've, we've commentated on Bally McNabb quite a, quite a few times in, in the championship in the last few years, and the, there's almost a ta telepathic um, communication and understanding between Rory and, and, and Gavin. And, and if they can bring that on to the county here um, at senior level, it'll really, it'll really benefit, benefit this senior team. Free given there against uh, Ian Farker for a push in the back. And it's played down the line and a lot of space there for big full forward. He gets away from Charlie Vernon and Charlie's tracking him down the wing. He's trying to hold him with a near hand tackle, but your man's got, got inside him and motoring well. He plays it back to 22. He kicks it straight up in the air. <laughs> a spectacular jump by Kieran O'Hanlon. He tried to take a mark. Joe Feeney settens the ship down and gives it to Rory. Rory. Rory, Rory gives it inside to Joe. Joe Feeney is pulled. Oh, Joe. Not sure what that was for. I think there might have been a third man tackle um, earlier on in the move that the referee had blown up. Shea Hafferin strong comes out and wins the ball. And a big lump of a fella, Kevin. Here's Rory on the ball. Gets his head up immediately. Sprays the ball in, and that's going to beat them all. It hits, lands on Gavin's chest, and Gavin's pulled down for a penalty. And Gavin gets up and tries to kick it, and therefore he still gives nothing. Gavin, when the ball landed on Gavin uh, McParland's chest, he turned and tried to kick it, and he was pulled down by the waist. That was, was a clear cut penalty. And the season coming ahead. And we're not at all biased here on Arma TV. Long ball kicked in here. Mickey Murray's under all sorts of pressures. And a ball breaks down to the Dundalk man. And Arma done all right. Well done, Mickey Murray. All is forgiven. And Arma come away with the ball out into the uh, right channel here. And it looks like Eugene uh, McVeigh. Um, he makes, a, makes an awful lot of ground down there. And comes back out, plays it back out to Charlie Vernon, is it? Charlie Vernon wouldn't be way up there. He is. The referee has given a free to Laura Mann. It's played in field to Finden. Finden lays it off. And a chance of a shot. Comes to Ethan Rafferty. 
Armagh. Armagh take that. Good score to tie the scores again. 12 points for Armagh and 2 6 for Loud. Um, discounting the goal, Kevin, at the start of the second half, it's been all Armagh this half. Yeah, that's as you'd expect. Like it has been. If like you think overall the game, they've seen two soft, silly goals that the game away has given Loud Heart throughout the game. Like Armagh has played some decent stuff. Um, you know, it's been handling her, it's been for attacking the times, but other than that, you know, you've shown real good signs. I love your commentary, Kevin. Every goal we can see is a silly goal, and every goal we score is a cracker. The ball's kicked out the middle. Aiden Farker. Nice wee bit of getting to know you there between Aiden Farker and his man. Ball played down the line. And Shea Heffern, Shea Heffern had done very well to put the ball out oh, um, over the line for a sideline ball for our man. Shea Heffern hasn't put a foot wrong here um, tonight, Kevin. And um, he'll have done his chances no, no harm at all. Joe, Joe Feeney's done nothing wrong for me. Come on, either. Uh, he's, he's really making things happen for our man this half. Big long ball played into Andy Morton. who's out like a rocket in front of his man. Plays it back out. To McKenna and a wee bit of misunderstanding out in the far side, one of the midfielders. Oh, kick left footed and a cracking score. Eugene, looked like Eugene, a cracking point. We're giving it to Eugene. Um, that's a, a arm, arm one up, that's 13 points to 2 6. Lanesman Potty Hughes getting involved in a bit of banter with the crowd. Um, Gavin McParlin with that point, in fact, um, a, a, a wonderful point, a wonderful point. Normally I've kicked some very spectacular points today. But um, if, if we could get the grips with midfield here, pushing the back, then our man just really haven't really got the grips with midfield, Kevin, at all the night. No, it's been it's been fairly poor. They've done slightly better at the beginning of the second half. You know, there's been a few knocking the ball down to the you know the, someone that's inside to pick up the ball. It's a lot easier. You know, instead of sort of challenging against the Louth man, he's been winning it there in the first half. So, um, you know, those sorts of things I'd like to see a bit of improvement as the match goes on. Yeah, and and don't get me wrong, the the work rates there. Heffern manages to hold up his man, shows good strength, and takes the ball off him. But then there's a slip and a slip. Very, very ropey defending there by our man, Kevin. I'm not sure what was going on there. Was there ever a given? A 45? 45. I'm not saying nothing about that, Kevin. <laughs> it's, been, it's been far too many occasions where the ball has went into the full back lane and they've looked very, very nervous. Um, you know, and it's something that we, we definitely need to be tighter on. Yeah, I think that's fair enough. It's, um, 45 is going to be hit, looks like Declan Bourne, number 12. Yeah, he's up the post, steps up, strikes it confidently, and straight between the posts to tie this game again at 13 points to 2 7. So, plenty of scores and plenty of excitement, and no shortage of effort and commitment from both sides. Um, goalkeeper McNeese takes a look up at his options. So I was thinking he was going to head it short to Shea Heffern there, but he looks out to the middle. Aaron Finden calls it, jumps, and wins it expertly. Big, strong lad Aaron Finden is, and he's turned into a good midfielder for Armagh. And Andy, Andy Morning held there all day. Um, maybe it's the mist that referee. Uh, can't see what's going on in there, but Andy Morning clearly incensed at some of the tactics being used. Getting Farker fouled by a slide tackle. Plays it down the line. It's Joe Feeney. Plays it into Aiden Farker, and Aiden Farker delivers it long and high. And if there's a punch on this, the ball breaks. And it's going to be Armagh who lift it. And it's out to Rory. And Rory slips. And we get on the ball with Ethan Rafferty who kicks it right footed and on this occasion uh, it goes wide and to the left. Um, hey, poor uh, Andy Morning's getting no joy in there, um, Kevin. No, he's not. He's, the defender's all over the top and he's pulling his hole at him. He's doing everything to, to stop him. And, um, you know, it's uh, you know, other referees what they want to give for you. Yeah, and I suppose it's, uh, I know it's 
the Ophi Cup and all that there, but um, you know there is a job for the umpires to have a look and uh, get involved if they can see that. Paddy Burns from Farkel coming on here, um, and another substitution. Number 25. We had a team sheet. Oh, there's been two changes in Armagh. Ball's broken and Joe Feeney managed to get his hand and he was sort of mishandled uh, and it's allowed to come away with the ball. It's David Finn, plays it out wide to the far side and allowed trying to be very expansive here. James Stewart playing it and they're in the corner and they've worked it back in there and again how have they got that much space? And only for a only for a very good block there by, by Mickey Murray, it was going to be a very handy free. Free for Louth sees Ronan Holcroft. Come on here. And, uh, he's going to replace one of the forwards. I wonder what's in fact one of the midfielders, is Daniel Connell. Rob Roach Emmets. So this 45 is going to be taken. Struck confidently. Struck with at the posts and it's put over the bar which by my counting gives Loud, Loud the lead it's 2-8 to 13 points uh, 48 minutes gone so uh, 48 minutes gone? 18 minutes gone to sign now no ball kicked out the middle the 25 and it's broken down well and Joe Feeney fouled him fouled as soon as he got the ball there and Rory gives it back to Joe Feeney and Joe does well to get in between two men there and scores an excellent point there Joe Feeney's second point of the game um, and Joe Feeney's made a real difference to this uh, Armagh half forward line since he came on chipping in with two excellent uh, points from play and getting involved in everything good that has happened in Armagh's forward play um, so it's level again. 14 apiece, for 2 8 to 14. And um, Armagh midfield will be looking to get to grips. And that was well won by, by Armagh. They recycle it and play it down the line. Good ball played in. But uh, on that occasion, it was put out by the, the defenders, and there's a slip in there. And there's good pressure being applied by the Armagh forwards, and a loose ball won by Aaron Finden. And a good ball out to Andy Morning. Andy Morning tries to dink it off the laces. And it was wide, just out wide. A very loose play by Louth in, in defence there, and Armagh just on that occasion unable to capitalise it. So, given the way this is going, wouldn't be surprised if this game ended in a draw. Will it be extra time? With one extra time. Let's play next score the winner. Um, but it's level here at the minute anyway, with approximately 15 minutes to go, says Kevin. And down the line and it's along that far side where visibility is very very poor live under severe pressure by Armagh it's midfielder Tommy Dornan on the ball he plays it right across the face Ethan's trying to get a hand in on the ball but he's, he's pulled his man and there's an over carry uh, but referee lets him play on and it's back to Kurt Murphy plays it down the line to a spur man number 15 Derek Maguire He's unmarked in the middle of the field and he runs on unmarked again. And he dinks one in in front of the full forward line. Shea Haveron. And that's almost another goal. And it's very, very slack um, in the full back line there between Haveron and uh, Mickey Murray and goalkeeper McNeese. There doesn't seem to be a, a, a voice there um, commanding and, and, and letting people know what's around them. It's very, very slack there, Kevin. Yeah, you're right. Like, there, there doesn't seem to be a leader there at the minute. It's, it's because if every ball is going in there, you just you feel quite nervous. What's going to happen? And it just seems to split apart and leave space left open. And that could quite easily have been a third goal. Yeah. 
Nice takes a look up and he kicks it straight out the middle. And Arma had jumped high over there, but um, there's a loud man who got his hands wrapped around the ball. And it's loud who come again. And they come back inside. And it's number 22. And he has a shot. And that shot goes wide, much to the displeasure of the Louth management here. And I Arma just need to uh, get themselves into a pattern of play here where they can get on the ball and work the ball up and get another couple of scores. They've certainly got the forwards on the field that can get the scores. McNeese takes a look up, assesses what's going on. Louth don't have any more men in midfield. If they're playing 14 out right in front of midfield here, I can see Arma have broken the ball down, but it's broken to a Louth man. Trying to get uh, number 14, I fancy Connor Grimes on the ball for a shot. But it's a great run here. Great run. He's right in on the goal and he dances his way through four or five uh, Armagh men. That's number 17, David Finn. And, um, it's been very, very slack defending there, as it has been throughout uh, the second half in particular. Um, very unsure defending by Armagh and. Um, has just let uh, allow them for another goal. So um, a goal between the, the teams and it all to do for Armagh. Um, McNeese kicks the ball out. Allow to win this again, yet again. Arm allow the one clean possession from a kick out and they're able to hold on to it and they come back to D Darren McMahon. It's played down the line and uh, a load of space. And here we go again, Arm uh, the loud man running straight at it. 45 being given. I thought that was the top corner, Gavin. <laughs> the way things is going in that back lane at the minute, I wouldn't have been surprised, but <laughs> But Loud certainly with their tails up. And um, just if we can get a check on the time. 54 played. Was it 30 played in the first half? 35 played in the first half. So it's almost 20 gone. So there's about 16 minutes left. So there's plenty of time. So uh, 45 to be taken here. It's yeah, in, almost in front of the goals because that effort nearly went in the top corner. And it's Jim McEnany about to take this. Jim McEnany, I think, from the Geraldines. Hits it confidently. And curls it back in. And a lovely score. Just leaves the score at the minute. With Louth with 3 9. And Armagh 14 points. So it's 18 14. 3 9 to 14. Armagh 4 points adrift. And Armagh desperate to, to, to win a kick out here. Um, McNeese takes this ball out. Ethan Rafferty jumps the highest, but. Louth win the break again, and Ethan, Ethan gets a breakdown, and he's blocked off the man, the, the referee, the referee tells him to get up on his feet. A couple of heavy hits there, Kieran O'Hanlon does well to keep the ball inside, and the referee blows it up for a, a head injury. Um, Kevin perhaps should have blown it up at the time. There was a third man tackle on a, on a, on a, on a blow to the head. Yeah, it, it just happened here right in front of us. Like, you know, when somebody gets a blow to the head like that, the referee should have blown it up, especially in the game like this. But I think the point being, he was coming running towards him, wagging his hand, telling him to get up, get up, get up. Um, just goes to show the, the, the dangers of head injuries and that, and especially it's, it's very prevalent in, in sport at the minute with concussion and that, and I don't think any chances should be taken with head injuries. Yeah, you're, you're, you're very right, and, it, and it's something that the DA at the moment is, is uh, you know, being very vocal about, and you know, for referees shouldn't really be waving away at a card. I just think it's, if uh, a player goes down like that in a game, it's really just a, you know, a friendly, and um, you see the player, it should be blown up, the player, the player gets a bit of treatment. <laughs> This uh, free kick is going to be taken by um, Ian Forker. Ian Forker takes a look and he's looking for options. He's going to have to kick it long and he kicks it long. And Ethan Rafferty 
try, tries to get a hand in, but uh, as soon as he puts a hand in, the referee blows for a free out. Um, goalkeeper plays it left footed out to the far side, where Armar trying to get tight, they're not getting tight, not tight enough. Now they've two, three men over, and Armar not really getting the hand on, and then. And then now they've left a man out wide, and that's Connor Grimes, who's in a load of space, and he motors down the wing, plays it back to Declan Byrne. Ball played in. And Mickey Murray doing his best to get a hand in, but unsuccessful on that occasion. And now tying with our man in the corner. And it's kicked left footed by Declan Byrne. Kept in by McNeese. I thought that ball was going out. Hung in the air a long time. And Armad need to move the ball quickly. Louth, Louth playing with two sweepers um, in this half. So Armad are going to have to push up. They're going to have to get a couple of scores. They're going to have to fill a few men into the, into the box there. And Armad, very wasteful of that opportunity. They had a chance to get the ball in. Um, of course, Louth playing with sweepers, Armagh are going to have to be very um, deliberate uh, with their kick. But Armagh have about 12 minutes to salvage their participation in the OFI Cup. Referee's giving them a helping hand here with a relatively handy free. <coughs> Andy Mornings in a WWE wrestling match with fists being thrown and everything. Um, you would wonder, Kevin, at times the role of an umpire if, if there's nothing being done with um, holding and there's nothing being done with pushing and pulling. Especially when if Arma is going to try and play one big man in front of the in front of the goal, he's not going to be pushed and pulled later on in the championship. So why accept it now? Yeah, well, this is it. Like you know, it's, there's, there's two of them there. They're, they're playing playing yards and in front of what's going on around them, and they should be they should be going in the referee and so on speaking to them. You know, he's been he's he's been being manhandled the entire game. He's given no protection whatsoever. And, you know, it's going to end up you can maybe see both of them reacting and both you know being red cured the line. And um, just in the mid in the midst of play there, they have another free from Rory Grugan leaves a goal in it. Fifteen points to three nine. Yeah, eighteen fifteen. It's loud on the ball again, and they're very deliberately um, trying to work it out, hand pass it out. They're confident on the ball here, and the ball played away out to the far wing. There's a break there which Rory tried together, and the ball was handled on the ground, surely. Um, Louth Marlon takes a solo in infield on a dummy, and Louth come again, and they play it down through the middle, and there's a big opening being run in there by the number five. And they're queuing up for a shot here. And they're in for another goal. It's actually an own goal there um, by Armagh. And it's 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 a horror show for Armagh at the back. Um, at six points in it with maybe ten minutes to go. Um, every time they go up the field now, Kevin, I, I was thinking they were gonna shoot for a point, but they're thinking themselves if we keep going we'll get a goal here. Yeah, well, it's just, just a simple one-twos, the support man's there, the Armagh's not stopping any runners coming in at defence, and it's just too simple. Um, they're even able to glide past their, their, their defenders as well. And it's just like, yeah, a free to Armagh there, which is delivered in long by Ethan Rafferty. And it's gathered here by, by Andy Mornan. He tries to shoot on the snap, and it's short. Ethan Rafferty tried to intercept a ball there. Louth working it back. Louth with their tails up, playing it across, and why wouldn't they? There's lots of space and lots of time, and they're under no pressure whatsoever. Ball played in, and well intercepted there by Kieran O'Hanlon. And that's better. And now let's see what Armagh can do when in possession. It's all along the far side. It's Rory on the ball. If he comes in field, he carries it in field and finds Aidan Forker. Forker's got a man outside. He shot and it's intercepted. And ball out to Derek McGuire here and McGuire steps inside and again there's an overlap. Rory Radford a big hit and missed him. Aidan Forker 
Um, I judge they have fouled his man there. And the right man kicked that against his own man there, so the referee just tells him to slow the whole thing down and uh, take it again. Number 12, Declan Byrne plays it backwards to Keith McLaughlin. And it's Jim McEnany plays it down the line, almost intercepted by Keanu Hanlon. But there's another run in and goal. Number 23, Ronan Holcroft just got on the wrong side of Mickey Murray and drove straight for the post. And Mickey had no chance but to pull him back there. It was either that or another goal, I fear. Um, so it's going to be a, a scoring opportunity here for Louth, which will see them go seven points up. And it's all fun to hard for him on the last five minutes, Kevin. Yeah, it is. The heads are starting to drop here a bit. Um, but, you know, we can see four goals like that. Uh, you know, it should, shouldn't have happened. Like, in that occasion there, he pulled him back. You can't see anything, can you? No, he's on that four points of four goals. You know, and that, that's what Freeze kicked over the bar. Um, by number 22, oh, yeah, Jim McEnany. Uh, which leaves a score at the minute. Hold on, we're just checking on the score. 4 10 to 15 points. 4 10, 22 15. 7 in it. So a ball kicked out here. Um, I'm not having one too many. Clean catches in the midfield. Referee's given a free that time. Ball held, the ball's held long enough. The referee's demand to go back this long enough to give now the chance to pull all the men back behind the ball. Um, ball's going to be taken by Joe Feeney. Joe Feeney takes it in in front of the runner. Uh, Snail McConville, yeah. Played out to the far wing. Played down the line. Joe Feeney plays it across. And it goes out for a 45 for Arma. But the time um, just run, run is 64. So um, six minutes to go here. the 45 about to be taken any time now it's eventually going to be taken now Kevin Definitely going to be taken now, Kevin. On the 45 being taken now by RMA and it's kicked. Very accurately over the bar. Uh, and a bit of... A little bit of handbags in the box. Takes up to get the blood warmed up uh, here and a uh, very cold across McLean tonight. <laughs> Two goals between the between the teams. Ruffy's hardly gonna give a penalty here, Kevin, I wouldn't think. He might want to talk to somebody. He wants to talk to number 12, Stacklin Byrne. <coughs> Stacklin Byrne from St. Mockers. He gets a yellow card. Not sure what that was for. Some infringement um, when 45 was taken. So the result is the ball has to be kicked out by the goalkeeper. It's all slowed down now. There's a um, a lot of delay. Ball kicked out and Lyle win another um, clean catch from a kick out. 
go back to go forward and they've played it out in actual fact for a sideline ball can they come up with a big finish going backwards and come in field Charlie Vernon steps on it plays it back and the ball is kicked Keanu O'Hanlon kicked wide on that occasion Again, <laughs> now goalkeeper in no hurry to kick this out. Aiden Farker tried to keep it in, but he's unsuccessful. Be a sideline ball to Louth with time Peter and out here. <laughs> sideline ball is going to be taken by James Stewart. He's playing backwards here. Keith McLaughlin inside to Dara down McMahon. McMahon plays across to Derek McGuire and played down the line. Corner forward gets two bites at the cherry. And it's chipped into the full back line now. And Finden had gone to full back. And it's the first ball that was well dealt with that came into the arm of the full back line. And arm off break again with Aiden Faulkner. Big enough challenge there. And Conville here with a chance of a free kick to narrow the gap. I think there's six in it. Sixteen points to four ten. Twenty two. Yeah, six in it. Conville. Steps up and kicks the ball. Over the bar. A 17 points to 4 10. And Kevin, no matter what way you look at it, 17 points is good kicking. It's the goals that uh, beat us tonight. Yeah, there's no doubt. Like it's, uh, it, it's been that, you know, I think the two negatives in the game has been our poor showing in, in, in sort of midfield and on our full back line. It's just, you know, maybe not the full back line's fault as such at times. It's maybe the protection in front of them hasn't been enough either. But, um, you know, going forward, we've scored some lovely scores. There's no doubt about it. 17 of them, in fact. And it's an arm, uh, I don't think they scored 17 points in any of their games last year. And if they can tighten up their defence, which they undoubtedly will, um, you know, the, the scoring end of things is, is certainly good, and the attacking end of things is very good. Um, good performance from Rory Grug and Joe Feeney when he came on um, in the second half. And, uh, just need to be tightened up around midfield and uh, half back, half back, and, and full back line. Here comes Lyle again, they're waltzing through midfield and it's beating them all, it's come to the number 23, I thought he swung that over, would have been the score of the match, Jim Rohn Holcroft, but it was just wide to leave uh, the five in it again um, with time, I think just on the referee's clock now, um, as much added time as he wants to add. Uh, I'm sure Armand would like to win a, a kick out here. Smacked out by McNeese. Straight down the middle. In the back. It looked like Armagh had won that ball. And now, like all, the whole game through it, um, have just been the, hunger, the hungrier for possession. Um, ball played across here. Keith McLaughlin. And on down to Jim McEnany, who's been at the on in the side for Armagh in the second half. Back to McNeeny again, he's going to try his luck. Kicks it off the laces and it is coming back round, but just not enough for him. Well on, Tommy. <coughs> and McNeese looks again. Not so much movement round the midfield now. Played short. Uh, Charlie Vernon. Vernon plays it out to Keanu Hanlon, who slips. Gets it back to Vernon, and Vernon's on it. He slips. It's all very, very untidy. It's played across to Aidan Farker, who's seen a lot of the ball. Um, yeah, Keanu Hanlon. 
does well to get on the ball. Strong on the ball there. Plays it to Farker. Plays it inside to Ethan Rafferty. Ethan plays it back to McConville. Yeah, McConville shows good strength on the ball. And he's got two men inside him. Shea Heffern. Tried to play it in and we might get this in the second round. Look to be Gavin McParland running in and there's the full time whistle. And a full time score from St Oliver Plunkett's Park. 17 points to Armagh and 4 10 to Loud. Thanks a million for joining us on Armagh TV and we'll be back again soon um, with our next game.